You're listening to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast with Mike Chappell and Dave Griffiths. Inside the Fox 59 CBS4 Podcast Studio, welcome to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast alongside Mike Chappell and Matt Adams. I'm Dave Griffiths. Thank you for being here. We are glad to have you. We are glad to be back in the same studio right now, and we'll hopefully do that for as much as we can this year. Um, but nevertheless, this is uh, finally, chap, the, the end of training camp, official quote-unquote training camp this week, uh, wrapping it up with two practices uh, against the Bears, and then it's back to back to team facility. That is, that's all she wrote for what the fans get to see uh, this fall of uh, these, this budding new Colts era with a, with a new quarterback. That's one thing people always kind of get wrong. You know, tonight is, is the last camp practice, but they still you still got like two weeks right. of practice. So it's just, it, again, it's, this is the last chance, would be the last chance for fans, which I've always said it's invaluable. It, 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 this has been a chance, again, for the fans to connect. And when you see players spend 10, 15 minutes signing autographs, it, it's just it connects and it builds your fan base. But – you know they still have you know next week with Philly and then and then they'll practice on their own but yeah but it, it's been a good camp for the most part. Yep, we'll talk about the uh, why the, some some reasons why it has and some reasons why it hasn't coming up. Uh, also, the preseason opener in, uh, in Buffalo. Break that down. The Colts go to steal a Jim Ursay phrase all in on Anthony Richardson. Thank you for that, Matt. Love, love that addition to the rundown. And uh, also, uh, speaking of uh, Jim Ursay phrases, we saw somebody at a training camp the other day who had a number four jersey that said quartile on it. <laughs> oh, that's great. It was the best love jersey it. I've ever seen. That's awesome. In my life. If that you, is have, you, you, have you got one? No, I, I might get one now. But if that's you out there and you are a faithful listener of the Colts Blue Zone podcast. Yeah, well done. Bravo. Absolutely. Bravo, the problem, the problem last year, and, and it works because last year they were bottom quartile. They were. So as long as it's quartile. Yeah, it's perfect. It works. Yeah, ups and downs, roller coasters. Maybe, maybe I should get one that lows. just says you quartile. <laughs> <laughs> you quartile. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. All right. Uh, so on that note, we'll begin with just the news of this week. Uh, in the first practice against the Bears, um, the Colts did suffer a significant loss uh, to the special team side specifically as Ashton Doolin has suffered a season-ending injury with a tearing his ACL in Wednesday's practice. Now, Mike, Ashton Doolin is not the guy that's going to go out and catch 50, 60 balls for you on offense. But as we were talking just before we started it up, like he might not gain those yards for you, but in special teams, he saves yards for you every game, whether it's 10 yards here, 15 yards here. Uh, like, and, and coaches always talk about how much field position matters. Ashton Doolin is a guy that you can, you don't see on the stat sheet on offense, you know what he does, but you can, you can feel his impact uh, when, he is, when he is out there as a gunner on special teams. The, the hidden yards yep. that they talk about, and you, you kind of slip that off until you say, no, it's, that, that's real. And keep in mind, he was a was it twenty twenty one second team All Pro, second uh, seventeen special teams tackles and a couple of forced fumbles, and he returned a fumble for a touchdown. And the, I, I, as we were talking again before we started recording, is he, he's sort of like Zach Pascal. He was always going to be your fourth or fifth receiver, and in in November he's your second or third because of injuries. Never really emerged. As that receiver, I think last year was his best season. Was it 13 or 14 catches, 15 catches? But really reliable. And, again, you can't get past the, the special teams. What, the, what this does, this impacts two positions. You know, it opens the door for somebody, Mike Strawn, I don't know, uh, Amari Rogers uh, at receiver. And, and then it's going to do something for special teams because those guys aren't special teams guys. They, they certainly won't. They're going to take a step back in special teams. You know, I, I think maybe you can – you'll be able to, to, to absorb the loss uh, on your depth chart at receiver, but he's he's hard to replace on special teams. He was a core special teams player. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to find somebody to, to be out there and, and gunning every 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 rep, whether it's – con- I think that's when he got hurt. He was sort so of in too. front of us, and he was running. He, he was gun, doing the gunning work, and he came up limping, and he sort of went back, and, and, and then it got to where he couldn't because he called trainers over and mm-hmm. – I was talking one of the, with Joel Erickson of the Star, and it doesn't look like it's that serious of an injury. ACLs sometimes don't. I, man. I, I go back to when, when Edge, uh, who was in camp last night, yeah, he he tore RB1, his one as you as you tweeted out. What, and, He's definitely and, the best and, running back and, on the right Argue now. the point with me, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, he tore his ACL in KC in whatever week it was, five or six in two thousand and one, and you just didn't think it was that bad. 
and they, and and it is so. You know, we we hope he uh, Ashton gets back in, in next year. He signed a two-year deal, but you just hate to see for a young player to have it have his, his his early years impeded like this. Yeah, from, from what I understand about ACL injuries, is obviously it's painful, like any injury is. But like what what it is more so than like immobilization of your leg it's more just instability of your of your leg like if you lose your acl then it's hard to just plant and keep your foot steady like which is what you do which in football you need you need to know where your foot is going and you'd be able to rely that it's going to stick when you put your foot in the ground so you can't just stick it and go back and forth and that's what the problem with the acl is and they know yeah, when when you do it, they know it's a very easy test Correct. on the field because it's, oh. it, it's the stability. You yeah, because it gives it moves the way it shouldn't move. Right. right. So, uh, w- wish Ashton all the best. Hope he's back next year. And the Colts did sign him to a two year, nine million dollar contract in March, so he is under contract for next year, uh, making more money than Jonathan Taylor per per season right now. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, anyway, he was a second team All Pro special teamer in 2021, so clearly a valuable member. And the Colts signed Tyler Adams, the Butler wide receiver, to replace him on the 90 man uh, roster uh, as of right now. So t- Tyler will be on the roster for a couple more weeks until. Uh, and God bless him. Good uh, for it. That's yeah, what you do. Seriously, you know, one one, one man step back it, it gives you the chance, and you never know. No, nope. you just never know. So that's good. Good for him. This this is probably. A player to brought in to, to help you with reps mm-hmm. in practice and in games, but that that means he's got a chance to do something more than that. Yep. Uh, it, it's kind of like they, they brought in Toriano Clinton a couple of weeks ago, and you right. got kind of excited about that local guy, Woo! UND guy. Look through the transactions today, and then you know five five days later uh, we've released yeah, Toriano yeah, Clinton. Yeah, so yeah, that that's yeah, kind of how it goes for these guys sometimes. Yep, yep. But but hey, you, you get in here, you get a little paycheck while you're while you're here doing some work, and and then you move and you have on. tape, and you have you're on tape. Yes, all those things. Uh, The Colts have their franchise quarterback, and it is uh, the Anthony Richardson era begins now. Uh, The Colts announced after Tuesday's practice of this week that, or was it Monday's practice? I can't remember. What the first practice of the week? It was Tuesday. Tuesday. Good, I thought so. Uh, That the days days run. They do. They They really do. Absolutely, (laughs) especially here at the end of camp. We're like, okay, let's go. Um, And Anthony Richardson is going to start game one. Um, very, very much disappointed me just so we can't get Gardner Minshew this year and Anthony Richardson next year and extend this streak, you know, but you, but, hope, you hope it's not Minshew next year. Exactly. That's the problem. I like I, I obviously jest uh, this because this is obviously what the Colts wanted when they drafted Anthony Richardson. They wanted him to go through the offseason program and realize that like that he could go out there week one because they knew he needs reps to get better. Um, so, so chap, I'll, I'll kind of throw this to you as, as we've discussed with, with Colts coaches or players or Richardson himself over the last couple months, what, uh, from your perspective, uh, speaking with all these guys has been the reason that Richardson is going to be able to start game one as a rookie quarterback, where sometimes other rookie quarterbacks do not get that luxury to be able to go out there and play. I said all along that, that I, I expected him to start as long as he proved that he wasn't ready. You know, they're not – I don't know if people are already criticize him. Well, you just can't throw a guy out there. They're just not throwing an unprepared guy out there. They believe that he is ready maybe more mentally than anything. I don't know, because there's going to be rough times. But you, he, he's – and he's going to have a, he's gonna have a dialed-back playbook. They're not going to throw the whole thing out there, but, but they're going to do enough – to where he can run the offense, be efficient, take the shots, you know, maximize his strengths, minimize his weaknesses. But we all anticipated this after watching the progression. Maybe we were surprised that it was last, it was this week, but you, you could see it from the reps. He was taking first team reps the last I don't know three or four times before they made the announcement, and that, that's when you know what this does. It allows the team to move forward. He is our guy. He'll take all the first team reps. The receivers know it. The running backs know it. Tight ends, mm-hmm. the line, and and they they and Shane Steichen mentioned this. Now they can really tailor the offense. They they can build the offense around him. Although I believe they had to think this was going to be. They, they didn't start building the offense around him Tuesday. Right. <laughs> so so but it, it, it was good good for him. And it's it's what what the season's going to be now is interesting. And we've seen he's he's not been consistent. He's been what we thought in practice, some good throws, some wild throws, and some that he one hops to receivers. Mm-hmm. But 
you might as well get, throw him out there, let him work, and as long as he doesn't look like he's lost mm-hmm. and, and overwhelmed, he's your guy. There's not, there's not anything that's been so dramatically bad from Richardson that has made that has right. reached my eyes that has made me say, well, he can't be out there. Like there there's like you said, there's some good things and some bad things as you would expect from a rookie, um, and with a guy who only has 13 starts in college. Whereas Peyton Manning, as you've said before, had 39 wins in college before he, he played in the NFL. Like, you, you just you need reps. You need time. You need work. And as, lo- and as long as he's not unprepared. Right. And also that he, like, you're not working through serious mechanical issues right. with him either to try to change something in his delivery or in his drop back. I mean, those are things that I'm sure you'll tweak and you want to work on. But, like, if, there, if there's no big stumbling block to him being out there, then why not put him out there? Yeah, you, you're you're pr- I, and I asked Shane Stack, and I don't know how he took it, but I said, "Are are you worried that starting the rookie, it may impact you in the win loss, and and it will, won't it? I mean, d- despite how low Minshew's ceiling is, and and, and and it is, I think he gives you a chance to win another game or two that the rookie won't. But that's not that's really season ticket base may not like to hear, but that's not that's what not this season's about right this is about advancing your quarterback so that in 2024 and 25 and moving on he's better in as long as he's not getting his head beat in and he's not making just you know he's not threatening peyton manning's rookie record for interceptions which Mm -hmm. is 28 Mm -hmm. he's your guy I think I think the over under on DraftKings is something like thirteen or fourteen, but it's been going up now. Because, Interceptions, yes, because because they're not they're just not going to have him throwing the ball exactly. Bart Farr or yeah. Brett Favre, or like Peyton Manning did. Like I don't think true. he's going to throw that much. Like, hit, hit the first half of Peyton's rookie year was not good, oh, and this <laughs> and, and this is with Marvin and, and Marcus Pollard and Marshall mm-hmm. Falk and a, and really a pretty good offensive line, but it's just a different. It's a different animal. Every practice, like like with the two with the Bears, or next week in Philly, this kid is seeing something different every time out, which is what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the, so some of my questions, just the timing uh, of this, and, and I, I think that I think that the the Colts came to the realization as we did after how much they've thrown at him and going to the first preseason game that there were no major roadblocks to naming him number one, and they got to the point where they said, okay. He's going to be number one, so we're going to put him out there number one in every practice. So the media is going to see that anyway. So we might as well make the announcement. We're, we're now. not totally stupid. No, exactly. Like they're they're not going to like keep putting him uh, QB one in practice and then come out to us and say no, we're we're still thinking. We're it still over evaluating. There. But no, what what happened when when the practice before the Bills game was Anthony Richardson, then the Bills game Anthony Richardson, then the practice after the Bills game on Tuesday Anthony Richardson taking first team reps. You, you could read the tea leaves that that this was happening. So so that's why the like, you made the announcement out of necessity because you were shifting. Uh, your focus in practice to giving him all those number one reps because you had made the decision at this point and now you're ready to move forward. What was funny is, and I thought it was taken nationally kind of wrong, is we asked Richardson what, what his reaction was. He said, well, I was shocked. And, and they said, well, really, you didn't, you know, his reaction was not, to me, met very well nationally. But what he was saying is, I was shocked hearing the words. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. Because he also said, well, I sort of expected this, and, you know, I was looking forward to being out there and thrown into the first week. But he, he, he knew this was where it was going to go, but and good for him. And, and what, it's really funny. He, he doesn't do it on purpose, but he walks that fine line from being confident to being cocky. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you, what are you pursuing? I'm pursuing greatness. He should. Yeah. He should. Now, we, I've been around quarterbacks who – they didn't. They didn't walk that line. They they, they went went totally across that line, uh, before really you know, earning it. Not not Peyton Manning or certainly not Andrew Luck, but I, I just like the kids. The, the kids' mental makeup, and he's totally different than what we've had around here. Uh, from a personality standpoint, at quarterback, and as a quarterback, I mean, mm-hmm. w- what I was impressed with, uh, the first game of, or the first practice against the Packers. Uh, against the, the Bears was I think he was 15 and 19 in teamwork but a lot of it was underneath but he ran four or five RPOs 
and he's getting five, six, seven yards each time. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting to watch that, and it will be to see that part of his game evolve. Yeah, that, that mental makeup is going to be huge and how that develops over the coming weeks. And, and Matt, yeah, I'm sure you can attest to this too. I think I think you're a little bit more quote-unquote online than both of us. You, you you are a digital producer here at the station, for crying out loud. You, you write web stories all the time. I mean, Chap does too, and I'm on Twitter my fair share. But like, just with how much scrutiny is, is out there, uh, and, and, and Chap, you kind of alluded to a second ago with how the national media reacted, uh, it, incorrectly in your opinion and in my opinion as to what exactly was said like people are going to say things that they don't understand he's going to have to deal with that people are going to nitpick every small thing he does because he's he's the the voice of the team he's the voice of the team now his poster is going to be on the stadium i don't know if it's going to be out there week one there may be a spot open but yeah exactly Uh, (laughs) i know know we will get to that (laughs) again that's coming that discussion but 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 matt like i said you you can you can understand how like how the the mental development of him is just going to be as important as the physical and football development. I, I think it's super exciting to be a, a Colts fan. Yes, now, I, I know that like we're not going to reach Peyton Manning levels of things on on this uh, ever, maybe ever, and especially immediately. But Manning was three and thirteen in his first year. Next year, because he he played all that time, he got all that experience, he saw how the game was different from college. Thirteen and three the next year, they make the playoffs. Now. He had a lot more experience under his belt mm-hmm. than, than Richardson did. And a better did. team around him. And a better team around him. Uh, but it's going to be exciting because you can see an upwards trajectory here where you just feel like the, the Colts have just been running in sand for the last few years with quarterback. With what are we going to do in the future? We're just going to get another guy. It's going to be another retread. We're going to get a guy, you know, that, that sort of thing. And we just have a guy back there. They've got a guy back there right now, especially with the potential is through the ceiling. I think – I think fans have got to be elated with this. So what do you think, Chap, about his first preseason game, game out there against the Bills? Because this is our first podcast since, uh, since that game. You, you had a couple drives, uh, had uh, one pass uh, through the hands of Alec Pierce. That would have been fantastic uh, to, to be caught. Had, had one pass that uh, sailed over the head of Isaiah McKenzie that was picked off and taken the other way. Uh, what, what, what overall impressions of him in that first action? Kind of what you'd expect. You know, you'd, you'd love to have that first, the interception back, you know, and, and – miscommunication where where he should have just chucked it into the sands uh they really put the blame on on mckenzie for running the wrong route i think it was supposed to be a hot route because there Correct. was a blitz and th- yeah, that wasn't right. done yeah. he, he, he kind of went to his regular depth and, and right right he but, couldn't but, get rid of it when he wanted but he to had and, to hitch because yeah. of, because of the blitz off the yeah. edge so so that that's but that's what but then he came back and, and that's what's important and and we're, again not to blow up too much out of a quarter of play but then he came back and had two pretty good series. You know, the first, the, the, the second series gets stalled when they when they couldn't pick up. Was it third and two and third and fourth and one? You know, Jonathan short, Taylor short, pick, short yardage. That'd be great. Jonathan Taylor picks those, that up for whatever that's worth. But during that ten, and then in the next drive, there's not a ton of quarterbacks who make that throw to Pierce that, that Pierce didn't hold on to. That was a great throw. It was a beautiful throw. You got and you got to make dog on it. Got to make the catch. That, that's you know it's the big boy league and you gotta make the catch but he got him down to wherever it was inside the 10 and i tell you i was impressed by that rpo he ran to the left he got down inside the five yep. and it gets called back by a penalty yeah if there wasn't a penalty and if he didn't slip that's probably a touchdown i mean they, right. and, and if, if am's butts are whatever right, uh, right. cherries and nuts then right. and, 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 then, and then matt gay misses a 20-yard <laughs> field goal which was holy smokes what's I, I couldn't tell if it was a bad hole whatever i don't know but i thought the way he came back and played was encouraging mm-hmm. uh, for his first game. Yeah, and I, I also was not. What was Matt Gay was, uh, and to, to be like I was watching this in the in the um, in the track office at Indianapolis Motor Speedway because I was out there for all, all the racing this past weekend. So I, I'm sitting there watching. I see Matt Gay coming out for like a 28 yard field goal, and Greg Rakestraw, God bless him, on the call on CBS4 put the worst announcer's jinx on him ever, just uh, talking about uh, yeah, he's, uh, blah, 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 he, he never misses, and he's so good, and the uh, Colts brought him in and paid. I was like, I literally said, in the office, he's going to miss this Doink. stupid kick, and <laughs> right at 28 yards, missed the kick. Everyone in the office can, can attest to this. 
I called it. Not that I wanted to call it, and I don't think that Matt Gay is a bad kicker, but you could just you could feel it because of Greg Rakestraw. So everyone tweet at Greg Rakestraw the next time he does the uh, the super announcers jinx this weekend uh, when the Colts play the Bears at 7 p.m. Saturday night. You could watch it if you're in central Indiana um, on Fox 59. So, uh, but Matt, what do you think about Anthony Richardson, his first time out there? Well, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. I had been out to training camp. So, you know, I didn't think he was going to just walk up to the line of scrimmage like he didn't know what he was doing. But like and he, start Omaha it, it, and it, it, uh, this. Exactly. An audible and that audible, yeah. uh, but I, I mean, it looked like he had command of his offense. He looked like he wanted to know, looked like he knew what he wanted to do with the ball. And you know, then we saw some of the the, the pluses and minus here. That that reverse angle shot of that throw to Alec Pierce. My gosh, that ball in the bucket. Nobody else was going to get that. I wish he'd have gotten that mm-hmm. ball because it had been yep. a real highlight play. It's a great throw anyway. The other one I really liked was he ripped a 20-yarder to Kylan Grant. Grant's down the- Just a frozen rope uh, mm-hmm. that got past like the line. It was past the linebacker before he even had a chance mm-hmm. to try to try to get to it. You know, those were great. But then, yeah, no, he had a high throw to, to Pittman, which Pittman got up and got. But then later in the game. Had another one high yep. to Pittman, and it was too high to Pittman, and, yeah. and one behind Grandson. Right, right. But that's but that see that's, that's him. what you're going to get. That's him. It, it just is, and you know you you cannot play in this league completing 53 percent of your passes. Mm-mm. Can't do it. Nope. 60 percent probably, and I don't know what his ceiling is going to be. Probably 58 to 60, because this is who he is now. Maybe again, like Josh Allen, that does, you know, markedly improve. But th- this first year, th- this is what we're going to see. You just hope that. The mistakes aren't glaring and game turning, mm-hmm. and but it's we were. I was talking to Rick Venturi about this, and with the, the Minshew Richardson dynamics, and he he considers Minshew a singles hitter, which is probably pretty accurate. Well, the, the NFL is a double triple home run league. Yeah, it really is. You can only you need you to can, bump up your OPS a little bit here. Yeah, you can o- you can only have so many twelve and thirteen play drives, mm-hmm. and that's why again we'll get to it in in a bit. That player we haven't really talked about yet, he gives you that. And that's what you need, and, and, and that's also what Richardson brings. He mm-hmm. brings down the field. Last year it was just awful to watch these guys, seven, eight, nine yards. What I think the receivers averaged 9.9 or 9.3. You, can't, you cannot compete in the NFL doing that. You just can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you'd asked me if preseason, if – uh, if Michael Pittman Jr. is going to average like 8.7 yards per catch, I was like, dear Lord, good heavens. Oh, we, we've said it, it's really hard in this league to have 99 catches and not, bring and not get 1,000. I like, mean, it's, it's been yeah. done like six times, and most of them by running backs. De- defenses are too good to allow 10, 12 play drives over and over and over. And in, you're going to mess up. You're going to have a hole. You're going to yeah. have a false start. Yeah. And- yeah, and, and there were too many uh, offensive line penalties, by the way, in that first practice against the Bears uh, th- this week. Four or week. five. Yeah. In, were... in, in the, in the, in glaring this, the two-minute drill. Yep. The, fir- the first play was a, I don't know, 20-yard pass to one of the tight ends, whether it was Brown or Granson, and there's an illegal formation. Illegal formation, yep. Had to bring it back. So, so yeah, you, you can't have those. Absolutely. The, the, yeah. the other thing is uh, I just hope uh, he's a big dude, uh, tough to bring down, but I hope he doesn't get – too in love with uh, trucking over other guys. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, it depends we've, we've on the guy. We've been through that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah you, you don't want you don't I, want I don't to mind seeing him. it on occasion, but yeah. we don't need to but, yeah, do I, it all the yeah, time. He, you can lower your shoulder against Kyer Elam. I don't want you lowering your shoulder against Danny Trevathan, if you all understand that reference uh, yes. from uh, yeah a couple of years ago that, that we don't have to get into. If but you're that's a something fan. he'll have to learn. Yeah, and, exactly. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of knowing, which I'm not sure Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck ever got to that point. No one, no one enough's enough. Mm-hmm. When is the play over? Yeah. And I remember talking to Edron James in his rookie year. He tried to get every yard out of every play. Mm-hmm. And then he realized if, it, if it's third and seven, you got eight. And you, you don't need to get 11 by mm-hmm. taking punishment. So, mm-hmm. and, But, but that, that's the learning curve mm-hmm. that, that he will get. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be really fun. Matt mentioned it. And we talked about this when, when the draft happened. What, what this guy does, he gives you hope for something. Yep. And prior to that, you really didn't have yeah. anything, you know, a, a hope. I mean, Philip Rivers gave, gave him, you know, the, the playoff, and it could have been more with a couple of plays here and there. But this guy, he gives you long-term hope. And that's all you can really expect at this point. Marvin Harrison was the best at that, getting down. Like, get, getting oh, first down, oh, getting yeah. down. Oh, and we, we, always, we always used to say, you know, Marvin, but – 
But then you complain the other way when Andrew Luck takes too many hits, you know? <laughs> so we, we just need something to complain about, basically. Marvin Harrison, Syracuse University's finest. And we move on to uh, Wisconsin University's finest. A young man by the name of Jonathan Taylor, who was allegedly back at, at training camp earlier Monday. this week on Monday. And then gone as soon as he arrived, basically. He was, he was here Monday, Tuesday, I believe, and yep. then gone Wednesday. And then gone. The, the Colts said that he is gone for a personal matter now, and uh, his absence is excused. Um, so, so this is just the latest uh, twist and turn in, in the Jonathan Taylor saga. And I, I'm, I'm certainly not going to – and they said that it had nothing to do – this personal issue had nothing to do with his contract. And, like, I, I, I guess I, I believe this statement. I guess I do. But when there's just one thing after another after another, you get to the point where like, okay, come on. Like it, it just it weighs on it weighs on the fan who's expecting, hopeful that uh, that Taylor can come back. It weighs on the head coach who has to keep answering questions, which I thought was hilarious in the first in the first practice against the Bears this week. Uh, Tyken comes out and he says, "Well, you guys all saw the uh, we said what we said, and that's all we're going to yep, say. That's all we're going to say. Uh, we had a great day out here. Fans were great energy. I'll now take questions about practice. <laughs> that was my favorite. I just died. Uh, I was listening to it live back here at the station as it was being fed back, and I was just like, ha." Ah, uh, this guy. Uh, I love it. Like, he, he's done with it. He is done. Absolutely done. He, 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 we've always said he, he's a football coach. I mean, he is. A, 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 but, but, but he's also right now being the face of the franchise correct. because he's the guy in front of the microphone. But more and more you see that he's, he's the kind of coach like most of them. Yes. When a player is not there, whether it's this or an injury, not that you're dead to me, mm-hmm. but, but that's not high on my interest list because right. I'm going to talk about guys who are here. Mm-hmm. And the problem is this, the Taylor situation, it, it just tends to suck the oxygen out of the room. Mm-hmm. And I just, we've talked, I, I don't know how this thing ends. Yeah. You know, they, they made it clear there's no extension coming. They made it clear they're not going to trade him. I, I, would, I would not totally rule out a trade because mm-hmm. things happen and things change. But in my mind, what the next step, seems to be and if i'm wrong you can correct me that the team is going to say we believe you're healthy to 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 practice right and he says no i'm not and then and then you've got an issue then then you've got a stalemate and then you i assume you've get third parties involved and then it gets nasty and Mm -hmm. you know I, i was talking to rick venturi again with eric dickerson they suspended him for four games because he essentially refused to practice so I, I don't know. I hope it doesn't get there. But I, to me, that's the next step. He, he, has to, he has to either practice or not practice. You know, we got, we got a, a, a roster cut coming up. Mm-hmm. And what is it, the end, the end of uh, the month? Yeah. So mm-hmm. something's got to happen. And, and they – I pointed out, you know, I heard people say after the game in Buffalo, well, you know, they're running back Deion Jackson. Is that – no, no. <laughs> Without Jonathan Taylor, they're going to average 95 yards a game, 3.6, and that's with your quarterback doing some right. stuff. Yeah. So it, it, it's they need him back for so many reasons. He's, he's their best offensive player, one of their top three players. And you, to, to have your rookie quarterback who's going to have problems – don't saddle him with, with a mediocre or less running game, but I, I just don't know how this thing ends. And that's the biggest trump card, if you want to call it that, that Jonathan Taylor has in his pocket, that the Colts need him to, to, to be at their best on offense in order to help Anthony Richardson, which is your number one priority this Correct. year, is to help Anthony Richardson. And you have a guy there that can absolutely help Anthony Richardson, and he's not playing. If you've got Zach Moss or Deion Jackson, and they're running the uh, the RPOs right or left, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm going to say, forget the running back, pound pound the the, the quarterback. If if the running back gets it, he's going to gain five <laughs> yards. So it's it's just it's just a bad situation, and the the problem is when when it, when it you get right down to it. The, the team has the leverage because they will they will play September 10th, and come hell or high water, they'll, they'll be a running back out there. Right. 
And, you know, as Jim Mersey put it so poorly that, you know, if he's dead and JT's not here, the league goes on. Well, it, yes, yes. That's not wrong. But, but, but uh, so, yeah, I, I if I, I, I told some people, if I had to bet $100, I would bet that he's on the opening day roster mm-hmm. because I don't, I just can't see the other option, the nuclear option being really a realistic option but the, the closer we get the more you wonder if that's going to be the case right and, and like i i also do find it quite ironic i'll throw this out there that that jim ursay said that which is not wrong again that in uh, that the they'll forget about uh him they'll forget about jonathan taylor and i think he tried to mitigate it by throwing his name in there as well i don't think it mitigated it all that much well, he killed but, he killed himself but, off yeah jonathan but, taylor just wasn't there anymore but, but no one <laughs> no one remembers the good old days better than jim ursay no one looks back and uh, remembers peyton manning era and marvin harrison and edger and james no one looks back at that at, at past eras more so than he does. And he's saying that uh, eventually, looking back at the era of Jonathan Taylor, he'll be forgotten eventually. So it, it's kind of a dichotomy yeah. in there and what he, what he does and what he says. So that, that's, I, I guess, just another uh, thing that Jonathan Taylor is probably thinking about while he's trying to get a contract saying, you, you know, you, 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 you look back all the time. You, you, you haven't forgotten what, what's going on. You well, and, he's, and he says, I take care of my players. Right. Well, right. Taylor says, uh. Hello. So, so yeah, that, that's what, again, it, what really, to me, strengthens Jonathan Taylor's resolve, I guess, is when Ursa said, well, I, I just remember Peyton with Marshall Falk. And what Marshall meant to to, to, to Peyton, and then, you know, we're really going to be we're hopeful that Jonathan's a big part of Anthony Richardson. Well, then Jonathan Taylor says that didn't pay me, right? You know, don't don't just plan on 350 touches and me getting beat up and whatever, and then worry about the contract next year. I just thought we we we, we throw things out in the media room because we again we get that's bored. what we do we, because that's what we do, <laughs> but boy, just. Uh, Throw him four million dollars. Redo the contract. However, you redo contracts, which they can do magic with contracts. Give him an extra four or five million for this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but then maybe you 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 have an and Taylor says, yeah, okay, we'll do that. You just can't franchise me next year. Well, the team's not going to do that. No, exactly. So it, it's you know we we look at things about what they could do, but we have no idea. I keep thinking Taylor wants. Three years, forty million. I think. Right. I mean, like thirteen million dollars a year. And I've always thought, give him Nick Chubb's contract. Mm-hmm. It was what three years, thirty, thirty like six, nine, or whatever yeah. it was, yeah. something like that. Somewhere in there. But, but, but again, the team's taking the stances. No, we'll, we'll 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 address that next year. Well, Taylor says, you know, as a running back. Yeah, I like, want it now. The time. I like, want it now. But I'm, I'm healthy enough now. We'll, we'll see about that. But but like you did it to Braden Smith. You signed him uh, before his last year of his contract. You did it to Grover Shaq. Stewart. You signed him. You mm-hmm. did it to Shaquille Leonard. Uh, you signed Rigoberto Sanchez for crying out loud before the last uh, year of long, his contract. You're a long snapper. Yeah. I mean, and, and Quentin. Yep, and Quentin. They, they made Quentin the highest paid guard in. Yeah, you you paid you paid other non premium positions like that, you that, reset the market with guard. You reset the market with Leonard. That, that's where when, when Ursay says I you know. We take care of our players better than any organization. I'm taking any organization, and but then you've got JT says, "Wait a minute, you know, not me, mm-hmm. not me." So mm-hmm. uh, again, I I believe he needs to be better. You know, ha- have a better contract. He's going to make four point three million. I don't know how you get there because if I'm Taylor, anything they give me, bump wise, you know, short of a, an extension, which isn't going to happen. It would have to be, but you're not going to franchise me next year. So, and, and I don't see the team giving oh, up that. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't think the Colts want to hold on to next year for sure. They right. want to hold on to their ability to franchise. Even if they, they only, even if they only think Taylor, and again, long term, Taylor is not in the long term plans of this team. Doesn't sound like it right Rich, now. Well, but but Richardson is. Right. You know, Richardson is 10, 12 years. Any running back, I don't care if it's if if it's uh, Taylor or anybody, long term is like three years so but uh please just find a way to get this over with because like you said they, they put out that release last night and you just sort of say hmm really mm-hmm. because the week before he's away from the team and i swear to goodness i can't think of a time of a player who's rehabbing who leaves the team to rehab who actively leaves the team right yes, who's there and then goes right i mean 
what does that say about what, the reputation of, of your medical staff, that he, that he doesn't trust them? I mean, how else do you read it? So that, that's, it's difficult, and, and maybe next week we get some clarity. I don't know why we would. <laughs> so, again, like I say, until he, until he practices, we're nowhere. All right. We'll be in Philadelphia next week anyway, you and me. Mike Chappell, Dave Griffith's road trip to Philly. Um, still, we'll bring you a Colts Blue Zone podcast next week at some point. We'll, we'll figure out a way to do that. But nevertheless, um, I, it, does, does he even come to Philly? Is he even there? Is he on this personal? If he's, um, on, if he's on PUP, he's not. Why would he go? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, if you're not, if you're not participating, there's no reason for you to be there. Like, just, just, just stay away and, and keep the distraction and, away. And, and, and I wonder, the, the players have all said the right things. They have, yes. Which, but but I, I just wonder privately what what they're saying you know you're not going to find players who, who get in other guys business mm-hmm. contract business but at the same time the forest buckner came back here for a reason you know he didn't ask for a trade like like stefan gilmore did and whatever because he went i remember they had the big talk with 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 buckner and, and ballard and ballard said something to him to where you know trust me mm-hmm. well now all of a sudden you're you're, you're not getting one of your best players on, on the field. So it's, I, I just wonder what, what the vibes are in the locker room. And I can only imagine what they might be if, if somehow Taylor is forced to play, mm-hmm. which I, I guess so, so I don't know how you force a player to play, but what's, what's his week to week mood in the locker room? I, I don't know. Cause he's been really, really good to work with for the first three years. And now he's gone. He's done a 180 because he's he's looking out after himself, which right. you have to. Like I get it. I completely get it. Right. Yeah. And and, and I don't blame him for it. Um, but but yeah, it's a. It, like I'll bet that there are some players in the locker room that are on both sides. Like like people out here are. Like I'll bet that some people are with the team and some people are with him. And honestly, I think probably more uh, more. No, I'm not going to say that because I don't. I, I don't know. I was about to talk out of my rear end. So that I, I I just wish the team had offered him something yeah an extension off I, I don't care if you lowball him and he will give you three years 30 million and it would have been a slap in the face to him i think but at <laughs> least the team can say hey we offered him this but they didn't even do that and i, and I understand why they didn't i i do you know the injury if, if you want to make that well they, they've mentioned the injury but if, if you just offered something and then you can say well he he he, he turned down what we wanted but but they didn't do that. So and, and for the one of the few times we really don't know what he wants. We speculate what he wants. So how far right. apart are they? I don't know. Right. So I, I don't know. It, it, but again, like I said, it it just it just wears you out because you. Uh, I've posted stories and it really hasn't moved the the ball much. But you feel like you need to keep up with whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't think there's any more need to, to discuss this any further right now. No. But we, we've kind of gotten we, – we've scraped the bottom of the barrel. So it, it's disappointing. It's not going to get resolved anytime soon, although it needs to get resolved sometime, sometime. soon. So let, let, let's talk about this week and the first joint practice against the Chicago Bears. The Matt Eberflus uh, era continues in Chicago. So he comes down with some familiar faces to Colts fans like Allen Williams, who is a, a secondary coach here for, I don't know, 14 years, 15 years, a long time. Um, but uh, but plenty of people who uh, who are very familiar to the franchise and uh, the Colts and Bears both get to work against one another. Uh, Anthony Richardson, pretty efficient day of eleven on eleven work. I think uh, from reading uh, what uh, all the um, all the writers who who keep who keep like uh, tally of completions and, and attempts. Chap not going to waste his time with that. Uh, but uh, but I some- do some, but I rely more on. Uh, on our fine friends uh, with uh, like Kevin Bowen with uh, 107.5 yeah. The Fan does George a great Bremer job. George Bremer and Anderson is always Bremer, really good yeah, at it. Yeah, he's so. really good. Like that, I add credit to those guys. Those guys at are awesome. At the end awesome. of the day, I'm saying, I'm do. saying, this, this is what I've got. How far off am I from you guys? And <laughs> yeah. Normally, I'm close, but, yeah. but that, that's where we are. Yeah. And it's like he went like 11 of 16, 12 of 16, something like that. He, so was, that fi- he was 15 and 19. There you go, 15 of 19. Yep. And that's great. Like, that's that's awesome. That's a completion percentage that you would love to see. Most um, most of it was, you know, with the way Flues plays defense, most of it was the underneath things, which is fine because right. you would think the one thing that he's got to work on is his touch and his accuracy right. underneath. And also to take what they give you. Don't try to force it down the field. Don't just stick with your we, first read, but go to that second or third read. Which he did in seven on seven. 
he he throws deep to Josh Downs, and Flus has got his two safeties just sitting back there. Right. Yeah. And and they intercept it. Yeah. And it, it was one where they said that there was a miscommunication because Downs ran a, a shorter route, and 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 the quarterback thought he was going deeper. But that, that's that's what you that's why you have these, and you learn from it. Right. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of Josh Downs, he had himself a pretty fine day that first day against uh, against the Bears out there, and I, he just seems like more and more. As we go through camp, as now that he's healthy and that he's out there, like him and Isaiah McKenzie, the Colts may have listed Isaiah McKenzie, Matt, on, on the famous uh, first depth chart of camp as the starter. Second depth chart, too. The second depth chart, too. I, I, I got to think that Josh Downs is going to be more active as the season goes on, especially and probably at the beginning of the year, too, I would imagine, based on what we've seen. As excited as I am about Anthony Richardson, and I am very excited after what I've, I've kind of seen, the Josh Downs, man, that mm-hmm. is that is my jam right there, that, that slot receiver that mm-hmm. can just – wreck your game plan i love it if, if he averages nine yards per catch mike that might be okay if you're josh downs for this entire season i think he he has the explosive ability to get more but that could he could have that type of role that that jack doyle third and six role to, to be able to keep moving the chains but but he he's got the ability to go much more more than jack doyle 50, uh, yeah, more than <laughs> more than good old 7.9 jack doyle which that's not a knock right no not I'm at all. You, jack we were talking again in in, in, in the media room Jack Doyle got two free agent contracts. How about with that? With his team, he he made like is it thirty eight, thirty nine million dollars? Or yeah, it was thir- not quite almost forty million dollars. As a guy who was in the Tennessee Titans training camp and was cut and at was the end of cut camp and was then. driving home. Yep. So, and but Cole no, said, "Keep on coming home. We got a spot but, for but, you." But Josh Downs again, he he is the starting slot guy. For, forget the depth chart. And what's funny is he and and Anthony Richardson are are roommates. And he joked early on, yeah, I just tell him, before, you know, what we're in there now, you know, look at me, look at me. And he says, every time we break the huddle, I say, you know, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. He, he caught six or seven balls last night. In the, in the one-on-one work that they had, he, he beat the uh, Bear defender deep. Would have been a 40 or 50-yard touchdown. He, he is what – you're right. He's a guy that can really add some juice. And when you're a quarterback still learning the league – he will be looking. He'll take his shots, but boy, he'll be looking at those underneath things, with with downs and the tight ends that, that can really be a special year. What I've been impressed with him, Mike, is that he's not he's not making contested catches. Like he's making catches with separation, and that means that he is getting separation either at the line of scrimmage or uh, out three or four yards into his route. You know, um, and I mean, having making a con- contested catch is great. Um, like Michael Pittman Jr. can make contested catches. We've seen him do that in the past. Alec but Pierce this guy catches and runs away from but you. But exactly. Like, he is away from the defender when he makes the catch. And, and I, every elite receiver, if you want to be a number one obvious elite receiver in the NFL, the guys like the Justin Jeffersons, the Devontae Adamses, and I'm not putting Josh Downs in that category yet. Whoa, slap the brakes. <laughs> Easy, no, Billy. Easy, Billy. But I'm saying Bella. every single one of them, if there's one thing that all of them can do, it's separation. They can all gain separation. And then from there, all of those guys probably have another elite trait afterwards, whether it is speed, whether it is strength, whether it is route running capability or like just the time in the offense to be on the same page with the quarterback. Like all those things like are, are, are additional, but every single one of them can gain separation like they catch the ball i always look back to jerry rice man like what in, in the early 90s and late 80s like it was stunning every game you could see joe montana throw the ball over the middle like 20 yards downfield jerry rice is streaking running a post right across the middle of the field and there are two defenders four yards behind him every time ball comes right in stride and he, and he wasn't exactly ball. using bolt no no he wasn't but he he got separation every game from every cornerback that he played against and Josh Downs has been able to gain separation early on here in camp it's something that's really impressed me and if he can develop that continually and be consistent with that I really do think he can be a heck of a weapon for the Colts this a year. really interesting comment because we we talked to Steichen a lot about Josh Downs last night is coaches w- w- with the receivers they, they need to be in certain places at certain times so the quarterback knows right where, but they mentioned like with a slot guy, and he said, "Yeah, some guys sometimes you don't want to overcoach them. You kind of let them let them do what they do because they're good at it, and you don't try to make them regimented in, in their routes. And that's why having this time with the quarterback and in, in the receiver. Remember they ran routes uh, in, in the parking lot. Right. Was it on reporting day or yeah, whatever it yeah. was? 
but it, it's to have that feel to where you, it, it's not the regimented route. They did the same thing, luck, with uh, T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. went and said now, he said, I kind of run my routes my own way. And you don't say, no, 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 you're going to do it my way. No, <laughs> right. you, you just do your stuff, and, and the quarterback will learn over time. And we've talk, we're talking three months so far, but over time they're going to learn mm-hmm. to anticipate and again, he's the guy, like you said, the separation. Then it's up to the quarterback to not throw behind him or whatever, mm-hmm. but lead him. And what we've seen is that. And the talk of, uh, you know, Isaiah McKenzie or Downs, it'll be both. Mm-hmm. They'll both have a role on this team, especially with Ashton Doolin going down. Uh, I realize Doolin wasn't that much, you know, occasionally he would be a return guy. But if Downs is going to be my slot guy, that I think can catch, I don't know, 50 or 60 balls and really make a difference. He's He's been one of the primary punt returners. I'm not sure I will leave him out there and expose him that much. So McKenzie, McKenzie could be that guy, and we've seen his return kicks, right. some good and some too deep in the end zone <laughs> in Buffalo. But but uh, it's, it's really encouraging, and the idea to have – Young receivers. We'll see what happens with Pitt and his extension, yes or no. But to have young receivers with, with a quarterback, you know, let, let's say Pittman, Alec Pierce, and Josh Downs, it's really encouraging to think about. What about the other side of the ball, defense, and specifically the secondary? You know that's a really young group over there, but uh, there were a couple of pretty nice plays that we saw. Nick Cross had a pair of interceptions uh, uh, during uh, that first practice against the Bears. Rodney Thomas, back from injury, was out there making a pick uh, near the end of the set in, uh, day, I believe. Um, and so uh, your, your impressions, because uh, J- Justin Fields himself last year is more known so more so known for his legs. He's another guy who's, you know, he's one step ahead of Anthony mm-hmm. Richardson right now in the NFL. So what do you think of uh, what do you think of the defense's performance? I spent more time with the offense because mm-hmm. it's they're on different fields. So I didn't see a lot of the defense. But the reports were that, th- that those guys played well. Rodney Thomas, Nick Cross. I'm I guess I'd be more interested. Maybe tonight we'll get a chance to watch the corners because it's as young as you get, as inexperienced as you can get at corner. Really looking forward to seeing uh, Juju Brents and and Darius Rush. I mean, what, what a way to open your NFL career. Boom, pick going, six. Going pick six, and I tell you, you talk about separation. Uh, if you're even with him, you're behind. Yeah. He runs away from you. So really encouraged by that. And it's and we'll get to it, but the most encouraging thing about the defense is 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 Shaq being back out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, we've mentioned. Brick Venturi's name a couple of names. Uh, he, the way he says about cornerbacks, if you're going to miss on cornerbacks, miss fast because <laughs> Darius Rush is definitely fast. Yep. So if you're going to miss, miss, miss that way. Uh, injuries from camp. Did Braylon Smith was he out yes, there yesterday? Yes, he played. Okay. he played and uh, he practiced and and Ryan Braden. Kelly did not. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got a foot. And then uh, at some point during practice. Uh, Will Fry is a right guard, was on the sidelines with uh, a wrap on his right calf. Mm -hmm. And the backup right guard was Albert. uh, Arlington Hambright. uh, The the law firm of Arlington Hambright. Yes. (laughs) Esquire. He's he's one that that is really, he he, he had been the backup left tackle. Right. And all of a sudden he goes in at guard. So we've, we've really. We're really concerned about the depth of the offensive line. I think the first group's played pretty well. well I've hardly noticed Bernhard Ryman. Neither have I, which is, which, the, best which, which is the best thing there is. It really is. Quentin's played well. Braden's played pr- pretty well. But the depth is, you know, Blake Freeland has been – he's probably the number one backup tackle, but uh-huh. boy, you need depth. Who could have predicted this? Depth on the offensive line being an issue. My goodness. I know, I know. No one could have seen this coming. Right, we they, certainly never talked about it all summer long they here knew, on the Colts Blue Zone podcast. They knew Arlington Hambrick was going to emerge from wherever. Yeah, okay. He's played like one game of note in his career. So we'll see. But th- this is where, you know, th- this is with Ryan Kelly missing time. Danny Pinner goes to center, which he's probably better suited for center. He was really good filling in for Kelly in 2021. Those well, he was, couple games. He was, they, they were 3-0 and with him at center. Yep. Make, of that, make of that what you will. And he was a disaster at right guard. Uh, but they, they need two or three of these guys, these guys to emerge. And, and you, you need, boy, you need eight. You need eight guys. Mm-hmm. You're going to have nine, maybe ten, probably nine. They went but, into last year with eight, I think. Out, yeah. out of training and camp. again, what was strange about last year, as bad as they were, it wasn't injuries. 
Right. It, it was performance. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I am semi-encouraged so far. Uh, we'll see what Ryan Kelly is. I don't think it's that bad. He's mm-hmm. been at practice the last couple games or practices. And to see Braden Smith come back out there, he's kind of – he's been sort of the silent guy. But as we talked again, the, to me the most encouraging thing – has been Berthard Ryman, who has really played pretty solid. I don't think have we talked to him throughout training camp yet. We got him early. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, early, and because he told us he put some he put on some weight. Yeah, that's right. I remember uh, that now. And they 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 did him no favors last year. Right. Remember his first start was in uh, Denver. Mm-hmm. He had had an ankle injury, and that week in Denver they didn't practice. Right. It was it was a short. It was a Thursday night game. Yes, it was. Yeah. So, no. so oh, yes, it was. Go. coming yeah, off so injury go. and you had him yeah. and go, go go against a great defense and he looked like a deer in headlights. He like a rookie. They, yeah. they got run over. It, who was just transferred over from playing tight end. You, you, you in can college. you can hide a lot of weaknesses on the offensive line. You can't hide a bad left tackle. No. Uh, also uh, out uh, at practice against the Bears, DeForest Buckner. No need for him to play if he's not ready. So that's fine. Don't don't need to see him. You would love to see him out there wrecking people. Yeah, no, Jeff, just if you're a Colts but fan. You know, but you know. But exactly, you know he's going to wreck people. He's going to get you seven or eight yeah, sacks, and yeah. he's going to create havoc inside. Yeah, yeah so uh, also out on Wednesday were Jelani Woods, Drew Ogletree, Mo Alley Cox. I'd love to see, so, especially the two Woods and Ogletree. They're, they're missing – significant time now yeah, exactly. this has been a couple of weeks for all these guys right and, and and that's that's a group that can that can be unicorns for you that that can yeah. really set you apart like those guys are, are big guys who can make contested catches in the middle of the field and uh and, and really be difference makers i'd love to see that actually happen um a couple of players were also uh, dinged up uh against the bears malik turner the wide receiver defensive end Jannard avery uh saguna luby has been out with a concussion as they well took after- our, they took uh, avery out on off a cart yeah. And I've not, not gotten an update yet on what the injury was. Yeah. It, it didn't look good. No. Uh, it, yeah. Um, let's see. Brashad Perriman, Vincent Smith, uh, wide receivers are uh, also out. Um, Will Fries, like you mentioned, was injured during that practice. Um, Will did not have the best first preseason game. I'll throw that out there. The pro football focus scores for, for him uh, and, and for Freeland on the right side were, were not impressive. On the left side, it was great. It was, it was very good. There were like 80s up there, and on the right side, it was like 30s. And so in pass blocking, yeah, not, not, not what you want to see. Um, so, some more camp roster notes before we uh, wrap things up. Uh, Ethan Fernandez is waived with it from injury reserve. Uh, injured reserve on an injury settlement. He's no longer with the team. Um, Xavier Scott as well. Um, Tease Tabor and Ronnie Harrison signed. Ronnie Harrison, former quarterback at Florida High in Tallahassee, Florida, covered by a young scrapping Dave Griffiths as a, uh, as a reporter in Tallahassee uh, out there. And then he was signed to a place. So, he, so for, he's their really emergency quarterback. Yeah, exactly. He could be. Uh, he definitely could be. Uh, he signed, signed to play safety for, uh, for what's his name? For... Uh, Nick Saban at, at Alabama and was like a five-star recruit. Exactly what you expect from Chris Boward, super athletic guy uh, back there in the secondary. Uh, he played for the Jaguars and Browns a little bit in his career uh, earlier and uh, providing some more depth at safety. And you, you've got your, both your starters back, which is encouraging. You know, you got Julian Blackman, you got um, uh, Rodney Thomas, then you got Nick Cross. Um, but after that, it's a whole bunch of guys that are like, so if you want a little bit more depth, and, they, there. and like the note here, they've been pretty good about finding guys. Yeah, they have. late to bring in mm-hmm. who have helped you. Yep, like a uh, like a Rodney McLeod or a Mike Adams or right. a Mike Mitchell. And, and I don't know if he's necessarily in this class. Right, of these, I wouldn't these put guys. Them there, yeah. but, but, you, just, but you didn't think those guys were that either. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so Bears, Colts, seven p.m. Fox fifty nine Saturday night. Uh, chap, uh, in spite of, uh, like including the fact rather that there are two. Uh, there are two joint practices. Do you think we see Anthony Richardson on Saturday at all? I would. I, 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 Put him I, out there again with the home crowd. Let's yes, go. Yeah, for, for, for a series. Because uh, he's going to get more than enough work against the Bears' first group last night and, and, and tonight to where the snaps and all that it will be enough. But don't you think he needs to just run out of the tunnel Yeah, and, and get the crowd – you know, jacked up and yeah. all that. So yeah, but I, I would not put him out there a lot. Right. I don't think he plays much at all. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you in, put him there, you want the starting offensive line there as well. Right. Like I think, or right. at least most of it. Yes. If you, whatever I, you can. I think what we what we're going to see more as we move forward is, is these joint practices really devaluing. Yeah. Preseason games. Absolutely. Which is a, another rip at fans mm-hmm. paying because you're not devaluing the games. Right. Price wise, but no, I I think he plays, but not a lot. 
I, I would agree. So, so hopefully we get that. <laughs> I was, was going to say probably a couple RPOs and then a third down pass and then there you put go, the hat on, on the sideline. Yeah, 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 exactly. Go, go, go the sideline. Check it out. Uh, stand next to Shane Steichen and, and see what you can learn by just uh, by hanging out with the head coach and seeing what's going on. Oh, oh, uh, and anecdotally, uh, sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I know in years past, if you went on to StubHub for the Colts preseason games, you could get them for a song, five, ten, fifteen dollars or something like that. They are not going for those prices right now. Really? Okay. Yeah. Which well, I thought was interesting. It's their only home preseason game, right. you know. But people are usually wanting to get rid of those. Yeah. And maybe a little, couple days closer to the game, maybe those will go down. But right now, they were still in the forty, fifty dollar range. All right. Good luck with that, folks. If you're it, trying to sell your tickets. Never mind what happens in the game, but something something sticks in my mind. The last time the Bears were here for a next to the last preseason game, something sticks in your mind. So, you so, said something happened that game, hmm. third quarter. Hmm. I remember because I was at home on paternity leave, and then all of a sudden I see it. I worked till three o'clock in the morning. We were there till yep. three o'clock in the morning. Yep. With, with a quarterback who's no longer your quarterback. Right. So, just when you think there's a meaningless game, just throwing that out there. Yeah. So, yeah I was so. up until two thirty in the morning putting together an Andrew Luck career timeline <laughs> for the website. <laughs> that was a great night. Well, oh, God bless you as well, Matt, <laughs> for uh, for all the work. Uh, and and I, I did come in. Like I, I called our, our sports producer Phil. All hands on deck. Exactly. I was like, you need me. He was like, yeah, I'd probably be helpful. So I was like, okay, I'll be right there. And my wife's home. Our daughter's fine. She has uh, her family. My my my. Uh, my parents, my mom and dad-in-law, and and uncle and aunt were all there, so there were plenty of help at home. So I, I so I could head in and uh, and and remember that night for the rest of my life. That's for darn sure, as, as all of us will, as every Colts fan will for sure. But but this is like the first year that we have not really said anything about about twelve, and like, at least from my perspective, I'm, I'm, we don't have to anymore but, because but, but, Colts fans don't have to. But you bring his name up now because this guy is the first guy since that guy to right. give you hope. Exactly. And again, Richard doesn't have near the pedigree that Luck did, but he gives you hope, and that, that's that's what's important in the NFL. And Colts fans will see him Saturday at Lucas Oil Stadium, 7 p.m., taking on the Bears. We anticipate. You're, you're talking Richardson. Maybe. Yes, Richardson. That one. Yes. <laughs> Number five. I, that one. I think we will, they'll at least see him on the sidelines, hopefully see him during the game as well. And if you can't make it to the game, Tune in Fox 59 if you're in central Indiana. That'll wrap up this Colts Blue Zone podcast. We encourage you to subscribe. Get us delivered to your podcast listening device as soon as it drops. You can follow Mike Chappell online, Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, at mchappell51. Also, his work at fox59.com, cbs4indy.com. Matt Adams is at Statomati. I'm Dave Griffiths at DaveG underscore sports. You can follow us jointly at Colts Blue Zone. Mike and I will see you next week from Philadelphia. We'll phone in. We'll get it to you at some point, at some point next week on a short week that the Colts take on the Eagles in Philadelphia to wrap up their preseason. But for now, we will see you then on the Colts Blue Zone podcast.